an all-out e-push. This is actually a really popular push for them. You know that if you look at their heat maps, this is where they push quite consistently. Benita, I'll be surprised, the captain herself, she's able to kick things off onto the head of the jet. Drone will spot out and location will be revealed. And all of a sudden, this plant goes down in very, very quick fashion. This retake's going to be tricky here. They're all going to come swarming in through one singular door. Not sure that's the play, but finally the pinch occurs, man. All right, so the spike has been planted. Cat is going to try to even up the tally, but there's still one player behind. And we're playing super passively for CLG Red right now, counting on the utility of Killjoy, counting on the utility of Sova for them, for C9, to push forward and have to bring the fight towards CLG at the orb. And so far as that happens, CLG to still takes the upper hand, but they are sticking onto that boy, and somehow Mel behind that wall stuck in. For the A site, the retake is going to be very important for C9 White, or for any team actually playing uh, on a map like Icebox. Looking at this in general, the A site is designed at some place where you just always have to fall back on initial uh, contact if you're not getting any kills. And there you go, you see? They're getting dropped down, they're falling back to the screens, Rise and Vita getting the first bloods into this round, and we're trying to fight back, we're trying to clap back with these Spectres that we saved into this bonus, but it's still gonna be the spike down here for CLG Red with a two-player advantage. What a shame here for C9. They had everything going for them. They kept Spectres in hand and they thought they could just outgun and outrun, but it's not going to be. And guess who's left over? It's the Clutch Meister of Annie. We have seen her about 10 clutches throughout this. He does manage to get it down and get the plant and spike as a whole over towards B. Good fake, as you called before there, Vance. My problem is now is that retakes haven't been too hot here from the defenders. Can they make it happen this round instead? I'm assuming you still have a wall right now up for the defenders for C9 White on this retake, so this could be possible, and already we're going to have a Viper's Pit to come out too, just to try to bring the chances in our hand for C9 White to get the defuse. But you saw those mollies pop out from the Nana Swarm from CLG Red, and it's still going to be Naomi and Animal clearing things up and also clearing the Viper's Pit. To sum things up though, it's a one versus one. It's up to Annie Jo trying to get this one versus one against Rise, but she gets the paranoia and also the kill for the clutch for CLG Red to the beginning just to see if KD was going to push aggressively on that pipes, but not. We are creeping up towards this B side. Mel's in a perfect angle. Should be an easy kill. Benita's the first to fall, but a second one slowly creeping up. So kind of like Lemmings, but Mel still holds the angle out. Both Dino Swarms pushing the opponent down towards the spawn side, and she still loses a fight and gets out freely. And they spot Alexis on the top. She's going to get a heal. The wall's going to come up, and the plant is also going to be secured for CLG Red. Meanwhile, though, Cat has gotten one kill to give a one player advantage for C9 White. They are closing in towards Orange, and actually, we didn't get the plant because of that kill. Sorry about that. They actually rise, so it's forced to fall back with the spike all the way towards yellow, and everything actually gets reset. Wow. Just. I actually thought Rise was going to get that one down. I actually, when I was hearing the spike go down, I was very confident that that would be the outcome. The fact that they now have to push on back. Left. 30 seconds left and the announcer confirms all for you. Paranoia goes out, but I don't think that's going to collect anyone. But oh, Katie, Rise has been absolutely making the big mechanical plays here these past few rounds spike on the Omen. Me. But Annie makes it work and the plant goes down anyway. Did they think it was Rise getting it down? Well, too bad. You picked the wrong person. Doesn't matter. The real for CLG Red or any team, we don't have a Sage up to get a plant down. And speaking about that, they want to move a little bit faster for CLG. The wall comes up immediately. The spike goes down at the same time. And at this 3-3 scoreline, CLG Red are looking to hold on this post plan. But look at Mel at the orange. Places down that Killjoy ult and forces everybody out pretty much towards that yellow where C9 could potentially pinch. Oh, it's not the only ult that's possibly going to be popped. Rise thinks about it, gets back to spawn, but gets punished by Annie for it. Benita goes down, but Mel, multi-kill Mel on corner from now on. She pops it together with the double headshot, and there is no way Naomi does this. And as if the caster curse comes true as us. The A side here, Vans, I said they put a lot of reliance and dominance over towards A. Almost exactly as we said it. We saw a few rounds of the B hit instead, and well, it looks like they want to switch it up. They're not just a one site wonder they're gonna make it happen on multiple sites here even if the retake does occur from c9 good use of the ult here blade storm katie says good night sleep tight and she wants to make it a third but she can't make it happen and oh this is benita's opportunity here she's got a sheriff in hand it's not a lot but she can do quite a bit of damage here 1v2 does she play it out here vans i reckon she does she's got every opportunity and not much to lose she's got the overheal as well she could pick up this weapon on the ground she's also going to make the audio cue by dropping down as well 
well. So that's going to be a little bit easier for Mel. There you go. For the wide swing and also for the kill. But I do like what CLG kind of did there. They moved very carefully and very... Flashing and flashing operator plays. Oh, that trigger discipline. I thought that was perfect, Van. But Benita says, good night, sleep tight. I'd like the operator, please. And maybe she can pick that one up as she makes her way through. Jess is back with the caster curse. But at least oh, we did no. get the Benita and the KD head to head, right? So Benita right. got that upper hand. She's also not going to pick up this operator because she wants to push a little bit more aggressively towards this B side. But she's selling a fake. Everybody's rotated for two players over there and one player only on the A back. Even a res to come out. A two player advantage for the defense. And we also had an early Viper's Pit on middle side. So we really pushed out all mm. of CLG Red on both extremities. There we go, Mel. She waited out. She wanted to get some shots popping on from heaven, and she does, but she does get traded. Coming out on the top, and we're trying to get these wall bags in. It's so close for the hit, but the spike will still go down. Oh, that was almost a perfect wall hit there. That that was the wall bang you needed to stop that one out. Now they're going to have to use all remaining utility to try and retake. We know it's very possible, but this is a site that hasn't been very strong for the retakes for C9. They're far more got so much oh. more prowess on the A site. Defender Killjoy as well. Surely that gets destroyed, but it's still going off and all of a sudden, they should be able to make this work, siphoning them over to yellow, but it's not enough. The clutch goddess of C9. I don't think she's got enough time to work with here. It would require happening. They definitely douse the lead right now. Only a two-point lead for C9 wide, but make that a one player advantage already from the get-go. First one to fall as C9 White is already on this reading. We're having some very fast times right now for CLG mm. Red on the attack. That's what you want though. If you want to be confident and get the player down and bring the fight to you, that's what you, you need. You need the spike down to do it. A swing around yellow and it falls here every time they go to yellow. It's almost as if they're leaving blue and I don't know now because this particular spot here for C9 hasn't been good. They do try and start getting that defuse off. Good shot from Annie. Surely she can bring the clutch the back. She knows how to do it. She's a good shot. Pull it together, girlfriend. You don't have time and it's all over, Red Rover. Oh. As Kitty is forced to fall back into a corner, but still gets the first blood into this round onto Benita. This time, the same strategy as the pistol round, and I think finally we have the spike a little bit more out in the open. <sighs> What a shame. Miss shots there from Katie means that Rise, who has been the unsung hero, I think, or a heroist of this particular this particular half, I'm gonna say. She has absolutely popped off on the omen. Underrated player by far, as is C9 Mel. You can see her on the top right of your screen, making it rain and these fast pushes, these fast plants here, Vans. They have been what has been the kicker here for CLG Red. You leave it down to a 1v1 at the end. And I think Red C9 white even more than the opposite team. But the wall still comes out and the spike will go down courtesy of Benita. We're trying to go for the kills above the wall. But it's going to be Benita that's only going to do some health damage as Mel is going to get her reheal. But forcing now all the opponents to come out towards 410 and also breaking the wall on that main side. It's still going to be Katie that draws the first kill into this round. Naomi Doe evening back things back and it's across for her on these walls but it's still gonna be the defense on a retake a no. to take one down the wall to come up the right clicks from alexis and it's still gonna be a two versus one though cat fighting it down she's moving out with the knife but it's gonna be too late the defuse comes out and it is gonna be clg rads from playing uh with the mixed team and all these polo fires that they played in tier, tier two scene shows and it shines into this matchup but this time it's gonna be rise to shine first as they are holding it back on this b side but it's back and forth and for a two versus is one again on an eco for C9 to make it this close. They're still looking pretty good, making things look very expensive on the second half here for CLG. And Katie, oh no, they bump into each other, and it's just going to be Benita that takes the upper hand. And we also could hit that. Oh my god, I thought Benita is looking for that operator later on, but that's a nice shot there onto Katie. I mean, you're saying she's only got a sheriff to work Ooh, with, but does she need more than that, Vince? I don't think so. She's making her rain kills on the kill feed and oh. Into the kitchen, but there's not going to be any opposition. We're going to have to count down on Naomi right now, and she does so to be able to take down Annie. So that's also a recon dart that doesn't allow for clearage for C9 White into the B site. They're just going to have to push in with their bodies, and it's only 10 seconds left on the clock. We're trying to get this plant down. It does go down successfully, but CLG9. There are, sorry, CLG are just closing in on Cloud9, and they close in as well onto the attack, and that's going to be the easy defuse. And Map pick, if you're only just joining us now, this is the very first map, and 
God, this absolutely needs to win if they're going to win, have any chance at this series. Trouble's in a great position right now, but the timing, unfortunately, again, she was about to look back towards the belt side, but Katie peeks out, gets the headshot, and that had to be a crucial kill for CLG Red right there, because now it's an open left. site. You had to try to retake Five with an operator. Left. Your teammates are all across the map at the same time. A dink through the pipes. Benina's now out of armor as well. This is going to be so hard for CLG to retake. They do have a Killjoy ult right now, though, but do they want to use it? They will. Mm -hmm. Right away, and he also moves forward, but Benita gets that kill on that retake. And with everybody else from C9 White, they're holding back here towards the back of the orb. You had the delay on that time from these nanoswarms, and now that the lockdown is finished, it hasn't locked down anybody, and it's just going to have to be three players peeking out and only leaving Benita on her own this time on a three versus one. You're just going to try to make things a little bit expensive in the end because the round has been lost no matter what. Bonusite already built up before the player peaks. I don't even think she even clicked, so that is going to be one uh, forcing Benita to fall back, but it's still going to be a push towards the A side where nobody really rotated out from that first initial contact. Even Animal pushing down towards that mid side is able to retaliate onto Cat, so that means any type of lurch towards the B side is now over, and Benita could go for a full rotate into this A site. But the spike has yet to be planted. It is going to be a four versus three. You have a Hunter's Fury out from both sides, but we're not using it to try to cancel the ult. We're actually using it towards the spawn side instead. It connects onto Mel for one. She's so low on HP, but does not get the kill. Animal, though, training things out. Still, as C9 White are holding back towards the orb side, they do have a two-player disadvantage as the res now comes up for CLG Red. That spike is ticking down. Annie Dro and also Mel are still staying alive, and now they even up the tally into the round and also forcing out the Nanosaur. We're going to have to go into the higher ground, even forcing a Killjoy ult down onto the wow. ground. Rise has to push forward, and it does not pay off. Oh, no. They seem to have found an answer so far with a small place. Oh no, Katie knew that's exactly where Naomi was. She even saw the muzzle for a moment, but she gets punished nevertheless. Cat, she'll make it work towards the captain of CLG and she'll take Naomi out for the pleasure as well. And all of a sudden, you've got yourself in a man disadvantage if you're CLG red. That's okay for the most part because, well, Spike's not down, but there is more than 40 seconds to play with. But we, uh, I think it was Yinsu who criticized some of these uh, Viper plays from CLG. How are you feeling about it now? Are they pulling it out in the, rather, CLG and C9. Do you think they're using it correctly here? Do you think Cat's really popping up with it? Ooh. So far, speaking about Cat, she's going to get this headshot onto Animal, but gets traded out. And I think she does, just to answer your question. The Viper Pit does deny a lot of information so far. The walls that she puts at the same time on the attack, even on the defensive side when she put it on the defense uh, for those retakes have been pretty good. But back with the action this time though, on this plant that we have from C9 White, Chobo just got pinged out here from Annie Joe's recon, and you see those shock darts to come out too. But this is such a good crossfire from the three players of C9. Although Chobo is able to make two kills out of that, and even up the talent on one versus one, that clock is going to tick down. The smoke is out, Alexis is spraying through, and it's actually at halfway we are sticking at the same time and somehow rise is able to get it they were they're able you're gonna thank chobo for getting those two kills on the three versus two but now c9 white they're saying look you won the round, but we still want to battle through, and it's going to be Katie that's going to be very aggressive towards this mid side, updraft towards the top of the tube, goes back into the B side. You have also the Empress being picked off by Benita, who picks off two kills with that, and now we have two versus two. The Hunter's Fury to come out. It's trying to pick out Katie. She's at two HP, and she is going to survive. So now can Chobo get a clutch this time, get another multi-round? So far, yes. She's able to take down the low HP player, swings out on the second one, and he drove. They're both at literally the same HP but a recon dart from the, the attackers on the pulse plan it does not ping out Chobo she goes for the shock dart it's gonna be a set one towards the back of the site Chobo is still trying to move forward and as Annie is playing this very smart using a time into her hand she goes for the swing and also Chobo gets the kill but will she get enough time going into this one she should and it will be a... It looks like A is going to be the hit, and they're going to bring that spike on in nice and fast. Ooh. We've not been seeing the panache from C9 White on their attack so far, but, oh, Benita, she makes this flake and she makes it snappy. She might take Annie by surprise. Yeah, it's very difficult for C9 White right now. They had the recon dart to, to ping out some players for CLG Red, and now the turret knows that there's a flank too. So they have to push very quickly into the site, and it pays off. They're able to drop down three, but Benita's still on this flank, but couldn't capitalize on the second player. It's only going to leave Animal on her own in a three versus one and with that high low on the pipes and at 410. That's why I like Icebox fans. I want to see these long range shots be hit. 
Yeah, but they can't get it right now for C9 nor for CLG. There's a lot of smokes out in the open. One thing on the opposite side as well. It's just going to be easier for C9 with these wall bangs to get these frags because the toxic screen was up too. So Benita on her own on a 4 versus 1 remaining. It was a 5 versus 1. She's going to have to try to ace, but... Trying to get that last player. Go give them an opportunity to pull out an Annie Clutch moment there where she gets four 1v1s in a row. Nevertheless, 12 rounds to C9 White on CLG Red's map pick here. The attacker, so that is a lockdown in like, what, two, three rounds? This is looking very yep. good here for C9, although Animal is able to get this first kill onto Cat. And as we have one to team, we're still getting kills at least for CLG Red. Now trying to deny this plant. It still goes down, though, courtesy of C9 Mel. And it's not going to pulse anybody right now, but Mel is stuck inside a corner. Thankfully, a wall is up. The retake of a full player roster for CLG Red, but Mel is trying to hold her ground just by the wall. She takes down two. Empress to come out from Bonita. A retake of Tefas. Mel gets a trip kill. Finally gets stopped by Bonita. But now it's a one versus one. Can Rise get another clutch? But she's up against the clutch master herself of Annie Dro. Spy up the spam down to 76. Still going with the Jiggle Peaks and the Shunk Dark to come out. 36 HP left. A fake up onto the tower. And Annie's going to get the kill as there was no time. Lock out towards the spawn and garage. It's going to be a five versus five retake here for C uh, for CLG Red. So as we talk about in these matchups, always having these retakes so far for both of these teams, this is not unfamiliar territory. And it's still going to be Benita that gets the first blood. Jaskin's trying to retaliate so far as this battle is, is ensuing at the bottom of the C site. It is still going to be C9 White at a one-player disadvantage, but it is going to be Mel. Who else than her to try to clutch a two versus one to turret to come out, but it is also a smoke. It's going to be so hard for her to capitalize. Unfortunately, I did miss a little bit of it, but that's how I expected it to go. Oh my god, I'm getting deja vu. I've seen that position before. I've seen those double kills kick off, and what a shame, because for Naomi, she's in the prime position here. It was actually a rush through garage over in the sea. You can't really change that when you're in that particular position and you need to wait for your teammates for the retake. They do attempt it here, fans, but I'm worried because there's only one left. Could be Jazzikins and she'll go down to the hands of Chobo and condition. I'm not entirely sure. And so far, it's like the third round that we see a five on five retake. A gravity well to a Nano Swarm. We love to see those kinds of combos. And that's going to be Mel that's going to be credited for the kill. Meanwhile, though, on this bonus, it's not paying off for the defenders. Chobo's on her lonesome, picking up the Vandal left behind. Is she going to try to save it into the next round or just make it more expensive for C9 White? Have them buy with the spike. And try to get these kills. The first one onto Jazikins. Going back long range versus Anitro. Connects onto that one as well. And that is going to be the first point on the board for C9 White, a save Vandal, but still, she's going to have that information out with that Sova, as you can tell. She's going with the Recon Dart, and she also got cancelled out on the ult right away. So with that, we're taking advantage for C9 to push into the A site, a showstopper to stop Vanita, but it quickly gets traded out by Ryze in the back of the site. It go, It's going back and forth as C9 White regains the advantage, and they're going with the multiple smokes towards the spawn site, and finally, a plant to come down. It's always these post plans that worry me because we saw before that gravity well with the nanos. I mean, that was a beautiful little combination there. Here we go. We're seeing again that Naomi, this particular spot in the map, that's going to be a critical part of their ingress onto the retake. They know exactly where she is and she'll get slowed out as a result, but you can't stop her. You can slow her down, but she can still hit hard. And Kat says, that's fine by me. I know exactly where you are. Of everything in her particular position there. She knows that she wants to play aggressive, but then forced her back multiple times. She take a lot of HP and finally they dispatch her. Jazikin, she is the unsung hero of C9 at the moment. She's been doing everything she can on the ingress on the site. They're gonna ping out a couple of these plays, and you can see the ultimate the killjoy as well on the board. Unfortunately, it's not going to do the job that they intended it to do in a 2v4. Is this an uphill battle for CLG Red? I would say it's a massive uphill battle. Definitely. At least Benita is using her boots with the clamps moving up towards this hill. She does get the first kill, but now she's also going to be the last player standing. As she spots a second one towards the A cubby, this should be it. You should see her trying to fall back and save her weapon, but she's about to get flanked by Katsumi. And speaking of Katsumi, she's one of those players now for C9. Not only can she be a clutch player, she's She's also going to be the lurk player for the team, usually on this map, uh, because she has to set up her players as this Astra player. 
But uh, as this spike is going to go off, the round is definitely going to go in here for C9 White. We're just questioning if Benita could save her weapon here, and it looks like she will be able to. Timing. She had a perfect lineup for this kill, but she decides to unscope. This is the second time this happens, and we have a cosmic device to come out. We have uh, Shaw Hunter Spear. We have all of our ultimates pretty much for C9 White moving in. That's true. That's been activated. We're looking for the blade storm. We're looking for the quick flanks. And as they're trying to run, it's usually not heard on the other side of that barricade from the cosmic divide. But as soon as you cross that wall, it was heard on that flank. Anigro got the kill. And now you're just going to have the last two players forced to fall back and save your weapon. So uh, what I was trying to say here, Mel, when you're trying to go into this in your face for CLG Red, especially like two rounds ago when they popped down that Killjoy ult into short A, you saw that Chobo tried to push forward. She tried to fight back. She tried to get the lockdown mm. broken. But C9 White just seems, again, more prepared into the way they're set up with their composition on this map. Don't really mention her name for how she's getting these skills. Same thing for Katie. The frag this Distribution is still quite even for all of Cloud9. Mm. So watching them, how they move together as a team for the site, right? Again, Katsumi, she's that player that's playing that Lurk. She's able to get that first kill, but then the res to come out. So that's a lot of information, at least for the C side. And look at the rest of Cloud9. They're pushing as a group into the site, and they're getting the openers. And as, as I mentioned, Katie not getting these kills. She's getting it right now. Opens up the A site. It's going to be an easy plant. And now they don't need to rely on that one player disadvantage after they lost Katsumi. They're trying to figure out what this information's coming from, but as they still have Mel alive, they have the Nano Swarms towards that spawn site. They're just looking very good for this pulse plant. We've got the Owl drone to work with to get a little bit of intel, and that does manage to spot out a couple of those players. Hunter's Fury from Benita. Surely if she places this wide, it can absolutely kick things into the favor of the retake here. That barrier, perfectly placed. It's all it needs for Katie now. I mean, she only has to look in one or two different angles. Oh they know gosh. she's there, and oh, thread the needle, Vans, because that's what that barrier was. Looks like CLG has been pushed much further back here on the A side. Attack ultimate will come out. Where is that spread? Nice little pick. Picture of picture will give you a bit of an indication as to how far that will go. Does it hit heaven as well? Yes, yeah, surely it does. And Katie comes zooming onto site. She hasn't been a big hit on the first map, unfortunately. We called her carry Katie in the previous series, but she's only now being started to be absolutely activated as the carry of the team. Highest rated player by far. And if you are CLG right now, you got to hit those shots. Katie makes it happen over towards Naomi. And it's going to be the heaven and hell fight that we're seeing. Angels v. Devils. Chobo's going to be the angel and well katie she's an absolute monster and rise looking for another clutch attempt on her own pushing out towards the hell site is good for katie to fall but then after that protect on that flank but now she's out of the range out of that radar the flank is coming in but the rest of the push from cloud knight white is inside the site as naomi is playing inside the cage connects with the specter for two kills and even chobo gets one of her own so now the spike is down it's a two versus two the res comes out for clg as well and the hunter sphere from annie joe does not connect a fake plant now from mel looking back towards that spawn side and she's looking to plan for annie joe at the long end here comes the shock darts on that default spot is not going to connect as of yet and Anif even walks into the slow orb to get the kill onto Jobo so somehow they have even it up on a two versus two on such a chaotic round that looked good for CLG Red from their positioning but now Mel gets pinged out in the front of the site they're probably gonna have to rely on some great communication from these two players and it works out perfectly for C9 as it's gonna be Annie Dro that uses Mel B site so Katie is hiding in an angle where she's going to be safe. She's going to try to jump towards the air, right click, and not get the spike carrier, nor even the kill. So you get a spike plant, you're able to fall back, you're re healing yourself for animal, and it's going to be a five versus five just across this wall, just across this smoke. We're running through right now. Is it still going to be C9 White getting the first weapon? Look at all those oh players towards God. that front site. It's just going to be a bloodbath. Mel decided to press forward, but it's just going to be three instantaneous kills for CLG Red, leaving only ja Jazzy at her lonesome a paranoia this round should be secured now for CLG red and that's it you see her jumping around that spike is gonna go off no matter what so CLG red they uh, pushed as a group and it works out for them here on that pistol round beautiful bit of observation there they catch that paint shells as it comes through and attackers well they were gonna win that either way they were dancing
but they can shred with those weapons if they make a count. Oof. Speaking of shredding, though, it's going to be Katie with the first blood pushing herself. That's what I was talking about. Sometimes you just want to press forward and surprise your opponents on the defender's side and to do just that. And as they try to regain map control for CLG Red, they met up with Mel's Bucky right inside the garage. So as they go for this bot... Now, as they've got five... Are they full HP agents? Yes, they are. The attackers are going to try and get that spike down. That's super important. Oh, but guess what? No. Spike carrier goes down, man. That was set shot guard two raining from above, and it's just going to be them pushing out. And now it's Rise on her own. She gets three, but just not enough. The one that draws first blood is also the one that seals the deal into this round. And Believable is what it is. They're going to make a C-long push here. And they want to make it count because they've got short-range weapons to work with. Speaking of short-range weapons, Cap's got one of own. She'll get two for the long. And C9, oh no, they're just making an absolute mess of their opponents here today. That's a match point, baby. The B side, she's looking for this perfect flank onto Mel, who will not see this coming. First player already down, but a second one is also inside the garage, and she does not connect onto the kill. So an early four on four, but Benita immediately trades that out. That's a C side that's open. That's a battle also towards the back of the C link as Jazikin is trying to push forward. A shock dart to slow her down, but Katie's also moving out. The rotation's already up for C9 White, and they're looking to go for this retake. They've got to make it happen. This is map point, series point, entire tournament point, ladies and gentlemen. This is it, CLG. You have the numbers to work with here. This is the first time in a while you've had the ma the woman advantage, I should say, here. And, oh, you can hear that that spike. They're tapping onto it. C9 White, they want them to peak. They know exactly where Benita is. They've got a number on speed dial and vans. They've got to put it together here. Surely the timer ticks out. Surely this is a CLG round. The res is up, though, and it's a two versus one. It spiked halfway onto the fuse, and now they're off it. They're double swinging. The kill from Rise. The second kill. P of this series, because obviously, naturally, you're going to expect one of the C9 white players to walk away. I think Mel, by far, ACS-wise, is going to walk away the MVP of this particular series. But Rise of problems. I think Katie's about to come up against one. Jet V, Jet, and she. <laughs> the problem, I take that back ladies and gentlemen katie knows exactly what's going on and now we have that ultimate coming out from the defenders here c9 white can benita hit the the shots that she didn't last time with the hunter's fury no she doesn't that's the problem when of course she doesn't get as much damage as she needed there and oh the showstopper jazikins you were subbed oh, out no. from that one but no she doesn't make it happen she can wow. make it happen with full extent there how does that pay off? And it's actually a half fight that they had, but Naomi tries to stay alive. It doesn't work out. The Defuse is coming to come out for Cloud9, and they are.